We live in a timeline where the best OTT deck in Zero is once again Imperial Daughter. Hello folks, today we have another clan event back to back. The OTT one just ended yesterday and we're right back into the grinder and taking a look at Narukami. Now, Narukami one is actually one that I'm personally quite interested in because Vanquisher is actually one of my main decks period. Like, in the TCG, I play Vanquisher in V, I play Vanquisher in Premium, I played Vanquisher in G, like, I really did enjoy Vanquisher a lot. Although, it only gets cool later, it's not really, like, amazing just yet, but it's gonna get really good later on, so this is like, you know, it's like the Crypto Bros, you know, not a financial advisor, by the way, but you should invest in this, like, yeah, that's that's what how I feel about Vanquisher. So let's take a look at the event. Hopefully I don't have the same goddamn event introduction for a third time like we usually do. I think it usually skips it by now so let's take a look oh look at that it actually did looks like i was just you know wrong last time so of course the explanation here is as usual nothing too like new here it's the same explanation as always you trade these medals for cards and there's a ranking and the black vangaro gives you triple the points and blah 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 usual thing nothing we need to really like talk about too much but there are a couple changes once again there's always changes to talk about so first things first uh one of the good changes let's talk about a good thing first is that they added a new daily quest which is pretty good i personally like that because this is quite nice so if we look at the dailies we have the old one which says if you do 10 of the uh clan fight challenge fights per day you get 3,000 of the medals that you trade with but if you do five you get 600 so they're giving out another 600 per day which kind of adds to it so that kind of like makes up a little bit for how much they took away with the adjustments of the points but we'll see how the points are looking once we get into it another change that i'm not happy with at all is that they changed the duration of the boost skins from like initially the days would end at midnight now you'll notice that they are ending at 5 a.m which is a reset time so what people used to do with this is that they would essentially make it so that they could like use up a skin and then wait for the roll like, or like what they would do is like the day would reset into let's say like let's say it resets into Kamui right it resets into Kamui and I don't have Kamui right so I would wait for it to hit midnight and then at midnight it would go to Mamoru already for that day so I could then use the Mamoru skin to get my boosted for that day to clear the dailies right but they removed that which is kind of yikes but I guess it's not the biggest deal, I suppose, but still, please add the Chrono skin to this. Like, it's still garbage that they don't have the free to, like, the free to play skin in here. The Japanese community is begging for it. The English community is begging for it. Please listen to your players. Thank you very much. But yeah, we have Jaime, then Tsneto, then Kamui, and then Mamoru for the last one. I think the most important thing is to have the last skin because the last skin will be the one that you will be putting in all your remaining tickets into. For Nova, for OTT, I couldn't do that, so that's quite unfortunate. And then of course, let's take a look at the cards. The most important thing about it all. The reason why you even play these events is, of course, for the cards. And the cards are pretty good for Narukami. From what I've seen so far, I saw a lot of people wailing this event already. So first things first, we have Conquest Dragon. We already took a look at this on Tuesday, but let's talk about it again. Conquest is a GB2 once per turn GR, G Persona Blast, to choose an opponent's front row where you go and retire it. And then if you did, for that turn, your front row units get all plus 5k. So this used to work a bit differently in TCG, but it's still a very good effect because it's an extra power. And you're clearing your opponent's front row so you can get three swings into the face, which is very, very good. Then the other stride is the Zoras, who says when the attack hits a vanguard you can retire an opponent's random rear guard prioritizing the back row so it doesn't let you choose at all it's just random but it's probably going to hit a random back row and then if you did and then once you've retired you choose two of you the cards in your opponent's drop zone and bind them so that's actually quite nice especially for the lingering legion decks right now this is going to be very pesky and so i like that a lot he's also just beautiful like zoras looks really good and he was used in the tcg for quite a while then we have the face of narukami and g dragonic vanquisher again like i i've become really attached to vanquisher like at the start i thought he looked kind of weird but he's really grown on me and he's one of like my favorite narukami units right now and the deck itself in in the v series became really really fun so it says GB2, when an opponent's rear guard is retired by your card effect, for that turn he gains plus 3k plus 1 crit. Not once per turn. So you can actually stack this and make him like a big crit machine and try to close out the game like that, which is pretty cool, I think. So even if you can't stride, you can do some cool things. And when you stride, you can catamus 1 and choose an opponent's front row rear guard and retire it and bind it. So this is basically what makes this deck different from Kagero. At long last, Narukami is different from Kagero. With Brawlers, they kind of stepped into that like multi-attack, kind of like attacking different things at once kind of playstyle. But it's very much with G 
that they like really, really emphasize on binding. Like Narkami becomes all about binding. So I realize it's kind of dark on my side, so I'm going to boost up the lights a little bit. But yeah, so the bind is really cool. He also gains 3k when you ride him, so that is very nice. Then they also added in the Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion Legion. So this is Dragonic Kaiser Crimson. So he legions with Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion, which means you can use Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion skill on the Vanguard Circle. And he says, Limit Break 4, when your legion mate would use its ability, for the first time that you would use that ability this turn, you can make the cost of that ability be free. So what this basically means is that this turns your first Vermilion that you use per turn free. So you basically get a free front row swing. The only downside is that unlike Brawlers, you don't get any power from this. There's not many like power-up cards. I think that are generic in Narakami, correct me if I'm wrong though, I think there are some but they're like, they look at retires, they don't look at like being attacked into. And then he says if you have another unit in the middle column, you can Soul Blast 1 to gain plus 2k. So I guess that's a way to fill up your drop zone for Legion if you want. It was pretty cool, I'll definitely mess around with him, try to make a deck and fight out of this maybe because this deck was quite popular back in the day. I remember wanting to build Narukami for the first time when this card came out. And then the dude that was like selling me his old like Vermilion deck randomly backed out last second and I was really really annoyed but anyway then we have Chatura the third triple rare so yeah the third triple rare fourth triple rare rather for this event which is an extra one that we didn't have before so he says he's an 8k power grade 2 and he says he cannot attack rear guards he has to attack vanguard but when he attacks for that turn he gains plus 3k so like he's an 11k on your, on your turn basically and he has a gb1 skill that when his attack hits a vanguard you can count almost one draw one and choose a card in your opponent's drop zone and bind it so this is really nice because of course it lets you just like keep filling up that bind zone which doesn't really do much for the time being but trust me when we get to the next vanquisher support you'll be very thankful for that big bind zone and of course the card draw for cb1 is really really good so it doesn't surprise me that he's a triple rare this is like this used to be common can you believe that this was a common back in the day then we have the voltage horn dragon voltage horn is the amber clone basically gb1 when it attacks the vanguard while being boosted count us one choose an opponent's uh random rear guard prioritizing the back row and retire it and then choose two cards in your opponent's drop zone and bind them so same skill as vanquisher basically to keep binding stuff then we have the beautiful pg anastasia she will get another form in the future and it's really really good so this is the counter charging one also very excellent and then we have the stride fodder which in my opinion is like the rising phoenix replacement like in all these narakami decks that i was playing rising phoenix in they're just gonna go out and then just put this in so sweet and by all decks i mean um mr brawlers right you can still play you can still play rising phoenix in in the vermilion legion which is kind of cool and also in vanquisher so i guess we'll still play it there then we have the crits mr uh Reshef for vanquisher as well so quite cool we have jaggy shot one of the best v series cards in narakami he wasn't that great back then though gb1 when his attack it's a vanguard count us one and choose an opponent's front row rear guard and retire it so basically your opponent has to have a non-intercept in the front row which is quite unlikely we have this guy the blitz spear dragoon gb1 when he attacks the vanguard on vanguard circle for each card your opponent's binds when he gets plus 2k and vanguard circle in place count us one soul bus one choose an opponent's front row rear guard and retire it and bind it so he's not actually that bad. Basically like a potential alternative ride, I guess. We have this grade two, Dragon Dancer Veronica. During your opponent's turn, she gains 5k, so she's a 13k base. Then we have Mr. Chainbolt Dragoon. GB1 once per turn. When your opponent's rear guard is retired by your card ability, if you have a grade three or higher Vanquisher Vanguard, choose one card in your opponent's drop zone and bind it. If you did for that turn, one of your other units gains plus 2k. This is actually quite cool because this can make like any of your 9k's hit for 11. Because keep in mind that you are wiping out your opponent's front row before you start attacking usually, so you need to be able to like hit good numbers, like at least 21 and stuff, to actually be able to, you know, hit the Vanguard over defensive. So I think that this guy will actually be played in Vanquisher myself. Then we have Dragon Dancer uh, Vian, another really good card that's been played in Premium for a very long time. Still is in some lists, still is in some lists, because she says GB1 when your opponent's figure is retired by your card effect, put her back to the deck, draw one, counter charge one. So it's pretty good, like she obviously, it's a break even, it's not like a plus one, because you put back a stand to draw, but the counter charge is really nice, so we do like that quite a lot. And then we have a brawler crit, which is, you know, kind of like a bit of a salt adding insult to injury, I would say, but I guess it's fine. You don't really have space for this in zero though, because you're playing these great zero heal guardians, and then you gotta play like eight of the brawler grade three. So you can play one whole copy of a crit, fantastic. If your vanguard is a brawler, you can put this back to your deck. For that turn, give one of your brawler rearguards the following ability. When your vanguard's hack hits, for that turn, gain 3k. So it literally is like the all the grade 2s and brawlers, it gives it that ability. So you can play grade 2s that don't have that ability, I guess. Then we have the starter, which is the Har Harbringer Draco Kid. So he's a 4-runner and GB1. When any player's uh, 
card is bound, he gains plus 3k. And it's not once per turn, so he can get pretty swole, but the other thing is that good. I think you just run Great Researcher. Then we have good old Great Composure Dragon. This was the trial deck card in the V series. Uh, he's a 12k power grade 3, but on Rear Circle, he loses 3k powers. So he's only 9k, which is kind of sad. We have the y Wyvern Strike Bogsu. So he's just a 10k vanilla, nothing too special there. Then we have this guy, 9k GB1. When he attacks a Vanguard, gain 3k, so 12k attacker on GB1. Might actually be played just so you can make good columns with the grade 1 that I mentioned earlier. So could see it happening. We have Recklessness Dragon. This was another good card in the Narakami Trial deck in the V series. But he's in the TCG, he's just. Uh, or rather, pre-V, he is just soul bots one gain 1k, so nothing too fantastic. And then we have the Desert Gunner Shoran. GB1, when any player's card is bound, gain 3k. Also, not once per turn. This is an 8k vanilla. Looks pretty good, actually. This is uh, GB1, front row, during your turn, gain 4k, so it's an 11k grade 1 attacker. But this unit cannot attack rear guards, so... It can be a 7k boost, it can be a 11k attacker, but if it does attack, it has to attack to the vanguard, which is both good and bad. If you can clear the front row consistently, it's good. Then, of course, we have some sleeves. So we have Conquest Dragon as well as Reshef. So Conquest sleeves look pretty good. Reshef sleeves look pretty nice too. And then you can also exchange for some packs if you have leftover currency. So without any further ado, I'm going to clear through a little bit of this just to see how much, you know, do one of the boss fights for you guys. And then basically we're going to see how many extra points we get from having cleared one stage. All right, so we got up to the actual clan challenge now. So we're going to play against our Shibucho. So I don't really want to like buy the skin because um, I'd rather wait for Hennedy to release. You know, he's like my Vanquisher user, my Vanquisher user, not not this guy. But I don't know, the Shibucho is cool, but I'm not that into him. But I do want to see the animations and stuff. So hopefully this time our opponent does actually like ride up and stuff um, rather than just like, you know, the thing where we had against the Susano. Uh, the, the Sasano clan event where the opponent didn't actually get to grade 3. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. That would be kind of sad. And I don't have a Thabas, which is kind of unfortunate. I'll keep the PG for now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, we're fine. Are we going second? I think we are. Okay, that means we can get first stride. So I might actually want to keep the stride fodder in hand. Although I feel like I'll need PGs against this too. All right, let's get to the opponent's turn real quick. But I will stop when it gets to uh, grade 3. Okay, we draw another stride fodder. That's good. All right, so he's 8k base. We actually have to call the starter behind Vanguard just to swing. So it's actually pretty interesting. Like, there's a lot of those, like, power-up cards can scale pretty well in theory. So I guess I'm curious how... Like, I feel like Vanquisher might generally be quite decent even in early... in its early stages without even going to uh, all the new stuff. Oh my god, he's gonna use Chatter already. Ah, uh, but the draw skill is, is uh, GB1, so he can't. Unfortunate. And we heal too. God Gamer. God Gamer confirmed. Based. All right. Uh, but we need to take it out, right? So we need to, like... Hmm... I don't need Magnum Assault early, but I kind of like want to keep the Basil for next turn, so not sure what to do there. I think I'll just swing rear and hope I don't get like my face pushed in. That would be excellent. <laughs> we'll just swing rear and pass. I don't really want to like give up these pieces in hand. I like them. All right, ooh, let's go Vanquisher. It, it like... It started out really cool. It started out with like this, these like the colors and like him like lifting stuff something up, and I was like, "Ooh, this looks sick!" And then all he does is like he just like moves his arms or like flails around a little bit with like super bad frame rate. Like what? Just set one. I said the animations were good. Set two in the booster sets. In the booster sets, the animations are really nice, but the clan events are super popular. Like look at the Thabas one. It's so nice. He like moves around a little bit and slashes the water, zooms in. Like it looks nice, but. Somehow, somehow when it comes to the clan event ones, they look ass. Like, they just look bad. So I don't really know what's up with that. I hope they fix it, question mark, if that's even possible. Alright, so we need to be careful because he's going to start removing our stuff. So I'll call this penguin and pray that this gets retired by accident or something. Um, we don't really need to, like, commit too much. And TBH, I think I'm just going to do this. And, like, swing, swing into a rear and then swing vanguard. And then just like call it call it a day maybe like call something else afterwards with the uh, skill of the stride just to like take another thing out on the board or something but i don't want to like overdo it with the pressure and whatnot or like also with my hands too all right get a draw we can put this on the penguin maybe we can hit another time to the vanguard or something no heals i guess it's fine he's gonna hit a draw so it's gonna go to 26. So i think i can just like call a grade one or something then we'll get magnum for later sweet uh, i think we just call a grade one here and swing into the rear, and this will take out one of the back rows, so that'll prevent some of the power-ups that he can do. 
Oh, it has to be to Vanguard. Damn it. Okay, never mind. I guess it's fine. We took out an attacker, which isn't isn't bad. Okay, he's gonna stride. Good job keeping stride fodders. Usually the AI does not keep stride fodders in hand. That's like the biggest issue that I've seen so far. All right, goes into the Vanquish into the Zoran. Not using Vanquisher because I don't have great twos in the front row. That's interesting. So I think it only uses Vanquisher when you actually leave up intercepts and stuff. Otherwise, it doesn't. So. That's all right, I guess. Ooh, this draw doesn't really do much for me. Luckily, I have a PG and a and a heal guard in hand too. So this will hit. He hits a draw. Runs a lot of grade threes actually. There's a lot of a lot of draws in here. No, my starter. Any bound two of my triggers. Any bound my heal. Oh my god. Oh my Jesus Christ. That's a fast bind. Can we like not have bind be here? Can we like add it to the field or something? Make it a bit easier to look at. All right, let's push. Um, we have Basil on the board, right? Yeah, we do. We have Basil on the board, which means I think I can drop this. We have Wheel Assault as well, so it's fine. It's quite all right. Quite all right. So, I think what we can do is... I'm thinking how I want to order my attacks. I think I want to overcall the Thabas just to have, like, more attackers available for the time being. I know we might get retired later, but it's fine. We'll use the Basil... And then I want to use the Wheel Assault, but the Wheel Assault... So the Bez will go phase, this will go rear. Wheel Assault will go face. so technically I could use the Wheel Assault to, like, push up a Magnum from the back row and then restand. Ah, uh, but then I can't restand the Magnum, which is kind of annoying. Uh, that's kind of sad, if I can't restand the Magnum. I guess it's, we just overcall it then. That's fine. We're gonna do a big push with this Lambros. Maybe even win. One card in hand, if he doesn't hit, like, fat defensives, we might just win, so... That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So yeah, we need to like rest these guys, and then also rest the wheel assault to be able to resend the full column so it like hits for bigger power. Do not use it, but then we do use Mr. Lambros. First, we get a random retire, kill the grade one. That's nice, and then we're gonna resend this column <clears throat> so it hits for 26, which is good. We get a heal. So this, if he doesn't hit defensive, this both of these will hit, which is good. Unless we hit another trigger, in which case this will definitely hit two times. So that's also nice. All right, we've managed to. Get a win, I think. PG defensive. Alright, show me what else you got in hand. Nope, nothing. Alright, it's gonna be the 6th damage. If he heals, we don't hit anymore, but if he doesn't, then that's gonna be good. He does not, that's gonna be game. Very nice. Alright, so there's the boosted points. Um, is that a little bit more? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, actually, but let's see. Most importantly... Okay, we level up, and I just want to see how many points we get from bonus. Is it still the same? Is it gonna be 201? Or is it gonna improve by more than one? I want to see if they've made some improvements, because I feel like they're trying to find a good spot where, like... Because, like, for Novas, everyone could basically craft the whole thing for free. Like, the whole deck could be made for free without spending any gems. I think they want people to spend a little bit of gems, but not too much. But the way they did it for the OTT one, I think, was a little bit too greedy. So I hope they improved it a little bit. Okay, so the CP... Okay, this is interesting. <clears throat> I think the CP itself increased by two points, but the boost increased by one point. I guess that's fine. I think I think in the original originally it increased by one point on both of them. So I guess that's a little bit better. It's still not as good as it used to be, but I guess it's fine. I guess it's decent. So there you have it. So yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and auto fight my way through the remaining of my tickets for the rest of today so I can make the use of my Jaime boost and then wait until the Mamoru one comes on. Even if, you know, you don't have the boost skins, you should still do them for the daily quest. The 3,500 makes it even more worth it now to do them, even if you don't have the boost skins. So do your dailies, you know, don't don't skip out on the dailies. They are good stuff. I'll definitely be doing a deck and fight on Vanquisher because of a deck that I really like. So you can look forward to that in the future. For the time being, we have Thawas coming up this week, and next week I think we'll start taking a look at Asha as well. Especially now that the nerfs have kicked in and made some of these decks a little bit worse that the Asha deck struggles against, I think it's going to be a good time. But yeah, that's basically the Narukami Clan Challenge event. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and got something out of it. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you like the content, please do subscribe. But otherwise, it's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.